Welcome to another edition of the PHNX d podcast right here on PHNX. My name is Derek Montia. Of course, I'm your mayor of PHNX. We are joined by some very special guests. Not this guy, I'm though. You too, know this Derek. guy. My He's gosh. over here. My God. He's, <laughs> I knew he was going to do that. Uh, this is the vice mayor, occasionally known as Thunderstick Jesse Friedman. Jesse? People people don't care about what I have to say. I know, say. whatever. They, <laughs> only, they only care about what Chris and Stephen carry. That's right. Said. That's right. And we welcome in our guys from the Amarillo Sod, Poodle, Sod Poodles, uh, Chris and Stephen Carey. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks so much for having us, guys. What a setup. And thank honestly, you. the first thing I got to say is, is those highlight clips on the lead-in. Yeah, yeah. You guys have the perfect jaw lines. For those lead-ins, Did so you just gotta this? give you guys some credit <laughs> on that right away. That. That's our clip for the day, right there. Let's just clip that right there. You were 15 but. seconds in, and I've learned uh, Mayor and Thundersticks. So yeah. I yeah. want a cool nickname. We'll, we'll get that. We'll okay. get you those before yeah. the end of the episode. But. Uh, it's Steph in the second would Steph, probably be okay. the best one. Why is that? Just because I mean, he's he came from me. I was supposed to be the first one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we're mm. identical twins. Uh, just got biology. It. Gotcha. Just I understand. I like that. Well, of course, this show is brought to you by the fine folks at the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app uh and now these two guys very much very familiar with the game of baseball and obviously very familiar with a lot of the arizona diamondbacks players we've seen that have kind of passed through amarillo so i guess uh i know there's a lot to talk about you guys are the first set of identical twin broadcasters in baseball history so is that I, true that is true is right? that true no i mean i think so that uh, we're okay. together yeah right. I, I think so. yeah I, okay. I believe that's true um i know that we're the first fourth generation broadcasters That's right so the identical twin part was the part that was cooler for us in the beginning um that that we got to do it together um, but yeah, mostly because Stefan gets to look at himself. Yeah, for that's nine true. Straight in that <laughs> that's true. Well, see, that's what I was gonna say. Like, how yeah. much? How much do you hate yourselves? Like, because uh, of the other person. Well, like, I, what, I, what I will say, I won't say a ton of positive things about Chris, but what I will say is, I won't find a better looking partner anywhere there else you in go. the country. So wow. there's that. But quite honestly, yeah. you know, he 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 finds ways. You know, the games are two and a half hours long now, but yeah. there's no better way to spend three hours for Stefan than right in front of a mirror. Oh yeah, yeah no, I get true. it. That would be his <laughs> favorite part. Yeah. Yeah. His choice, an analyst, it would be a mirror so he could look at himself. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would tell my brother how handsome they were at least once a day with this situation going on. I have to ask so, like, I have two older brothers and the youngest of three, and I love my brothers. Yeah, like, oh, I yeah. enjoy, I genuinely enjoy spending time with them. But if I were to sit in a broadcast booth with either of them for hours and hours every single day. Like, I, I do like my brothers, yeah. but I don't know if I like them that much. <laughs> so I have to ask, like, do you guys get sick of each other? Like, is that a thing? Or are you just like, you just You're enjoy just each other's company that much? Or maybe, maybe you do get sick of each other. I don't know. I think the fact that that came with the disclaimer of how much you love your brother might sum it up a little bit. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, really, it's really an amazing thing. Yeah. By and large, you know, obviously we are each other's biggest critics. Sure. So iron sharpens iron. Uh, if somebody makes a bad call, if somebody screws up on the air, we're definitely going to be hitting the button to quiet things out. Be like, hey, yeah. you screwed that up. Sometimes yeah. sometimes we get into little arguments. But by and large, I mean, I, I wouldn't want any other partner, um, at least in this stage of my career, to yeah. get to the growth that I need to be at to eventually get to the major league level if we can get there and that's a hard thing too to find definitely somebody that is going to be honest with you about like things like that because i know with what we do we 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 try to find people that tell us like what we're doing wrong and what we're doing right and it, everything's wonderful you guys are doing a great job it's like but i'm not going to get better if i don't have somebody that can you know look back at me and tell me when when i screwed up and how i can make things better so like that's a great thing to have that in in each other but yeah i, I feel like you would uh I mean, yeah, it's like any relationship. I imagine you get sick of each other. I mean, other I'm I'm your well. biggest critic, Derek. Oh, and I get and then, sick of but, him but all you the just time. you just say nice things about me all the time. I really so. don't. I say the worst <laughs> things about him. Um, but how are you guys different on on the air? Because I we I know you guys do both play by play and kind of color uh, and and kind of switch it up. But but how are you guys different? Oh, um, Steph, Stefan has commented on this a couple of times, and what I would say is Stefan is more off the cuff. He, he's He's seemingly the comedic relief. And for me, I, I get really analytical. I okay. really go deep into the players and, and, and situations of the game. I just love the game. I've been absorbing it for as long as I can remember. You sure. know, even before Stefan decided to do broadcasting or wanted to do it, I was already invested in it. Yeah. So he kind of joined alongside of me and brought a side out of me that I didn't know I had. And so we complement each other pretty well, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um but the, the analytical side is is more me and 
and you're willing to make a joke or two every once in a while. Yeah, no, I mean, when there's no real face of the operation, since we have the same face virtually, mm -hmm. uh, we have to differentiate <laughs> ourselves somehow. Uh, I mean, and he alluded to something really important. He was into this before I was. I, I was a college lacrosse player. Uh, I don't know if player is really the best term. I was a college lacrosse bench warmer. Okay. Uh, practice you were squad, on the team. Practice <laughs> squad hero. Yeah. My, my joke is that I, uh, I hold the NCAA record for shooting percentage. I got in three games, scored three goals on three shots. Nice. So, yeah. I nice. mean, just, just go. Steph Curry, lethal. <laughs> you, don't, you know what? You don't need to include that other part. Yeah, of no, just I, say, no, I don't. I, I but hold he, that record. You know, yeah. like, he's already boosted my ego up so much on sure. this show. People are going to think I'm a narcissist yeah, yeah, if no, I don't I include the negative <laughs> parts of my story. <laughs> they're going to think by the end of this, yeah. they're going to. No, yeah, like, yeah, uh, foregone conclusion. Yeah. Fact. <laughs> Put it in the papers. Yeah. How how big? I mean, obviously, I, I know you guys get asked about this an, an excessive amount already, but we but we have to go there, right? So sure. so your dad is Chip Carey, right? Uh, newly minted broadcaster of the St. Louis Cardinals was with the Atlanta Braves for a while. Uh, then there's Skip, of course, also with the Braves for a long time, uh, and then there's Harry, your great grandfather, right? Um. How big of an influence did all of those people coming before you kind of like pave the way for this? Or was this really just like you guys really love doing this and maybe would have wound up doing this otherwise? Um, I think the first thing is that, yeah, for me, it was it was sort of a natural thing. My dad, in some ways, discouraged me from getting into this career path because he knows what it comes with. He knows yeah. the, 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 the nepotism aspect of it, the hard parts that come with getting a job like this and and moving into this career path. And, you know, maybe my family just isn't that good at anything else. That's the, that's the thing that, that we start to question and start to wonder. Is, or maybe you're just yeah. really, really great at this. Re yeah, well, or brand brand recognition. You right. know, you go to a supermarket, you buy something you really like, and even if something new hits the shelves, you just stick with the same thing yeah, over like, and over again. Like we're the craft macaroni yeah. and cheese broadcast. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Great. That's a great comparison. Um, no, but, but in terms of influence, we didn't know Harry. So Harry right. died in 98. Mm -hmm. uh, we were born in 99. Okay. Skip lived in Atlanta, and we've lived in Florida all of our lives during the off season. So we would pop in and see my dad for a road trip every once in a while. I mean, we were not. You know, there's a common misconception that we grew up in a major league clubhouse. That's just not yeah. the case. We yeah. were practically huh. raised by my mom and my grandparents, and we found that the job was really, really cool. Um, Stefan enjoys attention as much as the next person, and and that. and I I would I would be willing to say I like it too. And it's a really really great way to make a living. Yeah. And so far, uh, with what we've been able to do and what we've been able to achieve, with a little asterisk and had a lot of help with, um, we feel that we we've done a good job on our own. And um, the only influence I can say that we take is we try to be dynamic and exciting like our dad. The yeah. way he he builds a call. Um, that's what people remember. They remember the home run calls. They remember the yeah. strikeouts. They don't necessarily always remember, you know, the fourth inning, a one, two, three inning um, on a Wednesday in Baltimore. Yeah. But they will remember the walk off home runs. They will remember those things. And I think that aspects of the game uh, and broadcasting, people are losing sight of that. And we want to bring that back into the minor leagues and hopefully one day an eventual major league career. I know you guys have talked about it a bit, and you guys do an outstanding job. Jesse and I both have really enjoyed listening to you guys call games. Uh, but d is there a point where like it feels a bit difficult to try to forge your own path in a career that your family is such a big part of when, you know, like you said, there's there's all of those kind of preconceived notions and things like that? Look, I mean, it can't all be good. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what we had to come to grips with, right? You guys have read our story when we got the job. It, yeah. it wasn't under the most normal of circumstances and um when, when we came into it we got immediate national attention largely because of our last name now interestingly enough for those who haven't heard this story we met tony at game five of the world series uh when the atlanta braves were playing the houston astros and we were in the right field seats in the chop house um probably drinking too many margaritas um <laughs> but uh but uh my my mom was recognized by an usher and the usher pointed her out to Tony, who's my boss, my GM for the Amarillo Saab Poodles, great guy, mm. um, that this was Chip Carey's wife. And so my mom met him, started selling us on him immediately. And it was really my mom that should get a lot of the credit. <laughs> um, and, it, and really the stars aligned. But it, it is difficult 
to forge your own path, but some things should be difficult. It's difficult for guys that don't have our last name to get that's to where point. we are. Yeah, you have to take the good with the bad. And the quote that I use that I always try to talk to people about is you can't come from our background. You can't have the last name that we have and say till the, you're blue in the face that you had no help. And whether it was immediate or direct help from, from a person or somebody making a phone call, it doesn't really matter. It yeah. just is the fact that it exists and yeah. you have to recognize that it exists. And, and what you do with it is up to you. So what you yeah. do with that help and what you do making connections and and being yourselves because you know Chip's not out here to save us here at spring training. You know, we sure, can absolutely. we can either make a good impression on people like you or the scouts or people around or or we won't. I mean, that's up to us. Yeah. So that that comes from a more parental standpoint and stuff like that. But I think we've just we've enjoyed every single second of working together. And, you know, we're on a we're on a big stage in Amarillo that some people don't really understand how popular that brand is. Yeah. And we're trying to do right by that brand. But we're also trying to do right by our family name while also doing things our own way. Yeah. And that will that will uh, show itself in the next couple of years, hopefully. I love that you guys. So much. Do you guys feel a pressure to kind of like prove yourself? Like I belong here. Like I know maybe you did have some sort of help or something in getting here, but like. You guys are really good at what you do. I mean, I can say that honestly from listening to your broadcast. I don't I don't think it's just like, oh, you know, they you got You guys are they, here. We have to say nice you, things. You do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to have a family member of mine on your body right now. That's so, right. I mean, that's <laughs> correct. It's, it's totally, correct. yeah. I don't know. Did you buy that shirt before we came in? Or we oh, I've owned this shirt for years. Oh, are you that's kidding awesome. me? That's, that Derek, makes me you happy. probably need to tell the audio people what you're wearing yeah, right wearing, now. I'm wearing a wonderful <laughs> Harry Carey shirt. Uh, it has holy cows, baseballs, and beers on it. And I just thought it was the most appropriate shirt I've ever worn on an episode uh, of this show. <laughs> but, and uh, to, in, in all transparency, uh, I did send text messages to Jesse and uh, our content head, uh, Espo, asking if they thought it was appropriate for me to wear this. Because, again, you guys know who your grandfather, great-grandfather is. We all know who your great-grandfather is. It, it does seem like a thing, though, at times that, like, stuff like this, I, you know, it, there, there's a positive way to take it. And there's also, like, a, oh, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 again, I'm trying to be my own person. And, and, again, like, I feel like it's something that happens in baseball quite a bit. I think it happens with athletes. I think it happens with all sorts of people where – their father was somebody great. You know, we have that with 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 Drew Jones now, right? Yeah. Uh, like, so yeah. there's just this, you know, kind of still having to walk in 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 the footsteps of of your of your parents, of your grandparents, of your great grandparents. Um, but you know, make a name for yourself. And and I I honestly think you guys have done an outstanding job. Like Jesse said, we've really enjoyed uh, your your commentary and everything with the Sod Poodles, and we've really enjoyed the sod Boodle, poodles brand that you brought up like ever since it's become the diamondbacks double a affiliate like it's just an incredible you know place to to you know uh, have as part of the organization like don't you, don't you mean the calf fries Derek? the calf fries right. well, well yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah we got we got a lot to talk about there but <laughs> corbin carroll's contract extension is our big news this yes. week we've talked about it so much so we wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that were you surprised to see Carol get extended, I guess this soon, not extended, because I don't think anybody would be extended, but were you surprised to see him this soon? Not even a little bit. Really? I mean, this was, uh, this was one of Chris's crystal ball moments Yeah, uh, where he, he is very analytical. Like he, like he mentioned earlier, uh, we these were two talking, guys would get along. You and me would get yeah, along. Oh, I think we figured out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, the, the CD How arrangement. You, yeah, yeah, you guys are matching yeah. shirts yeah. and everything. They we could, got a lot going on here. here. They'll sync. get their calculators out halfway through the show. <laughs> yeah. just, who can solve this first? Um, no, but um, yeah, I, I I think that when Julio Rodriguez and Michael Harris were getting their deals done, yes, mm. this was when Chris started to think, hey, Corbin's next. Because it makes sense to avoid those arbitration years. It makes sense to lock in a player that young, that talented, this early. Um, now, I think that we both thought the number was going to be a little bit lower than it was. Okay. But I still think they're getting him for a bargain yeah. considering what he brings yeah. to the table. And, and make no mistake here because the, the figure being lower has nothing to do with Corbin's talent. I actually think he's worth more money right now. If I were to value him... Right now, he's a $140, $150 million player right now. Sure. The, yeah. the difference is it's the organization that gave out the deal. And I think that yeah. caught everybody by surprise was this eight-year, $111 million deal that gets up to 154 some odd yeah. if they, they uh, include the options. And Carroll signs it, and everybody's like, wait a minute. It's this small market team idea where it's like it's a very team friendly deal, but it's a player friendly deal too. Anytime yeah. you see a hundred yeah. million dollars being doled out, you you question, especially for a guy who had thirty 
34, 32 games yeah. in the in the major leagues last yeah. year. But I couldn't be happier for Corbin. Our experiences with him, though short, have been nothing but fantastic. And for him and his family and everything they've done and everything that he's done for the sport, it's it's life changing. And it's amazing to see a guy that young achieve his dreams because he's been so great to us and so many other people that it's finally great that the world is paying it forward to him. I thought of you guys. I know you were there at the press conference, but I thought of you when Corbin Carroll talked at the press conference about like that baseball was his life because you said on a couple occasions, you said, Hey, what are you doing tonight? And his answer was, I'm going to go home and get a good night's sleep and like study baseball, baseball. basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he's a gamer. Um, and everybody that watches this show and everybody that follows your channel, that follows everything you guys put out knows Corbin Carroll, the baseball player. I don't know if they know exactly what kind of a human being he is, but in our experience, I have one story that, that I will, I'll never forget. And it was when he got called up to Reno. So he gets called up to Reno and I wake up that morning to a text from Corbin. We're his broadcasters. Like we had very limited interaction sure. with him. We weren't trying to be up in his face because Lord knows that everybody from MLB pipeline, everybody from the athletic sure. were yeah. going to be up in his face, yeah. uh, asking him questions, asking him to do things. Um, not that it's ever a problem because he's always so agreeable. Uh, but he texts me and he says, thank you for always representing me. Well, I know I haven't seen the last of you guys. I'm really, really proud of what you're going to do. And to me, I had been around major leaguers. I had been around people that, that I would have been starstruck with, but that moment more so than meeting Chipper Jones, more so than, than meeting Bobby Cox was, was something that really, uh, exemplified my opinion of what it was like to meet a superstar. And the superstardom isn't necessarily what he is on the field. It's what he is off of the field. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and we love Corbin. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a fine line to walk in journalism ethics to become friends with the players you're sure. covering. Because sure. if they struggle, you start to teeter a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. Start, start saying, to defend well, them a little bit. Yeah, he's yeah. 0 for 34. But man, that swing looks good. Yeah, yeah. Corbin's, never <laughs> been, Corbin's never been 0 for 34 in his yeah. life, for the record. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he is... He is a one-of-a-kind human being and could potentially be a one-of-a-kind baseball That's player. something special, too, because he has so much going on in his life on a day like that to reach out to yeah. anybody that, yeah. you know what I mean, like, but let alone just to send you a nice message and say some nice things that really isn't about him and is more about your relationship with him and, and him knowing what you guys are doing. It's That's, that's amazing. And like, he did it again on his press conference. He yeah. walks out of the door, and we're on that roof yeah. of Salt River, and... He looks at us and immediately comes over, daps us up, and gives us a hug. Yeah. And when I say in, we we've had probably less than three sentences worth of communication with Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a, in a non work capacity, yeah. Chris doesn't have less than three sentences of communication right. with anybody. Yeah. So okay. it's really it's really yeah. impressive. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try and keep it shorter. I took the hint. Whatever. But, um, I get it. I sat next yeah. to him in the press yeah. conference. <laughs> My, I, I should have started with an apology before that. Anyway, um, so Corbin, he just comes and gives us a hug and says, "Great to see you guys." We were his broadcasters for yeah. two and a half, maybe three months. Yeah. And, you know, when we wa when we were walking home from Springfield to the hotel, I said, hey, Corby, you want to get a drink or whatever? Are you going out to get a drink? Because the guys sometimes go out or have fun or yeah. whatever. Yeah. He says, no, um, I'm going to go. And, you know, I got to I got to because he has a heightened sense of where he wants to be and the type of, you know, image he wants to have. Yeah. And yeah. he's always just he is as salt of the earth as it comes. And and it's been amazing to see a guy of that caliber that could in every way go the opposite direction and be a jerk or be just be the complete best per person around from a media capacity, from a human being standpoint as well. I know it's a small example, but I, I've told this on the show before that like I don't expect players to really remember me. And if I'm not, I'm, I don't have my press pass on and we're not at Chase Field and you know we're doing something, I really don't expect them to remember me. Uh, and they were doing like a charity event during Christmas uh, for the holidays and, and they were giving like kids a, a shopping spree. And I went over to Corbin and introduced myself after Jesse and I had met him already yeah. at the end of the season and, and covered him, talked to him a couple of times. And when I introduced himself, he just looked at me really weird and he was like, I know who you are. Like, <laughs> and it was the way any normal person yeah. would honestly respond to like, why are you introducing yourself to me again? Like, yeah, I know who you are. But yeah. it was just a little something that was special with him that like, like you said, it, it, he really does come across as being a very thoughtful person and somebody that honestly does seem very down to earth, uh, 
in a world of athletes that isn't always that, right? Yeah, I had a similar experience with Corbin where um, I was a math teacher in Washington State for a couple yep. years after I graduated high school. And uh, and I told Corbin about that last year when he got called up. Of course, he's from Seattle. Um, and he just he just asked me so many questions about, you know, where in Seattle I was. And he wanted to know what school I taught at and all these different things. <laughs> Um, Things and, most people don't ever care about. When yeah, Jesse like I'm not really used to up. pro athletes really like <laughs> digging into my past that much. They just don't really care. But Corbin was was certainly not that guy. Um, and then when I saw him for the first time this spring, uh, you know, he's asking me, you know, did you get a chance to go back to Seattle at all over over the offseason or anything like that? So, uh, yeah, he really is a gem of a human being. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, you know, I, I don't know if his form of leadership will ever be like the vocal, yeah. you know, super. Uh, you know, wild in the clubhouse or anything kind of a deal. But uh, but I mean, you want to talk about a guy who leads by example. Corbin Carroll is 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 definitely that guy. And we have that uh, when we when we heard about how yeah. Mike Hazen felt about him exactly. uh, handling Jordan Lawler's injury and having Lawler come uh, yeah. also sit with scouts and, and just very gave him minimal instruction. And next thing you know, Carroll was taken over on on Lawler's, you know, uh, basically going through the same thing that he did when he was injured, making the most of his time. Um, and speaking of Lawler, we want to get your impressions of, of Jordan. Hey, you guys saw a little bit yeah. of Jordan Lawler, didn't you? We did. We did. And and his story was interesting getting up to double A. So I won't disclose what happened, but I will let you um, figure it out yourselves. OK, so <laughs> let's just I'm say listening. let's just say a large group of players was put on the injured list at once. Okay. Um, and Jordan was just tearing the cover off the ball at Hillsborough. And he right. comes up to Amarillo Actually, it was Corpus Christi at the time mm. uh, that we were on the road and he makes his double A debut. We meet him. He introduces himself. Very nice, you know, silent confidence. But you knew that this guy was something special, kind of like Corbin, just a yeah. very kind individual willingness to learn. Definitely no ego whatsoever. And the initial plan, as we we heard it, was that he was going to go back down to Hillsboro. Right now, that never happened because he started and he hit the ball, he put the ball in play, but it was not really super raw power Jordan Lawler that everybody yeah. was used to. Yeah. But he was putting together timely at-bats, was doing everything at a really professional level at a high rate, and he was playing, I think, three times that week. He didn't. His management was not six games, six-game series. He played yeah. three games, I think two of them at short and one of them at DH, because we still had Blaze Alexander at the time. And, gotcha. and so Jordan was getting a feel for it, and they just kept him here. They just kept him in Amarillo. And then, of course, he came to Hodgetown and was fantastic. And I think that he is going to be similar to Corbin and where he's just going to hit the ground running immediately in double A and never look back. But he was remarkably impressive on the offensive side. Yeah, I mean, same type of guy in, in terms of personality. And you alluded to the fact that he and Corbin spent a lot of time together. Yeah, it definitely I'm sure that was naturally Jordan's personality to just be a good person and just be really nice to everybody. Sure. Yeah. He walked into to Amarillo, came into the clubby's office. Chris was there uh, and he just picked Chris's brain about broadcasting. Just asked <laughs> about it, what it was like. Uh, so maybe, maybe someday he'll be the, the color commentator for the Diamondbacks. Yeah. But I've never <laughs> seen a person sign more baseball cards in one sitting than Jordan Lawler. Really? It was crazy. We were, we were in uh, San, San Antonio. Antonio. Yeah, in San yep. Antonio. And we're going out doing whatever. Man, we really sound unprofessional. We're just we're just partying all the time. I guess. <laughs> yeah. well, we, were so, we were celebrating yeah. a guy's birthday. We were, yes, okay. we were celebrating a friend's birthday. Shout out Drew Stankowitz, who's going to Mexico. Hey, um, Drew. Yep, uh, Drew's uh, going to Mexico. He just nice. got off the plane. Uh, he was just texting me earlier. But uh, yeah, he's just sitting there banging out signatures for is this like is this like a, a, a like a sitting or is this with like fans no 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 just a just a sitting yeah like I, sitting I think down, it's yeah, a, yeah. yeah he does like he has like a card. deal with it but I, I was like you know he's so dedicated to every part of the game you know he he i think he understands the the gravity of the situation being a first round pick being a very marketable guy i mean even while we're here at spring training people are talking to us and saying he's your guy He's exactly who you need to market in Amarillo because he can handle yeah, it. Yeah. He can handle anything that is thrown at him. He's uh, he's just been a real joy to watch and a guy that um, you know, has made time for us just like Corbin did. Yeah. But they're a little different. Yeah. You know, Corbin is this kind of quiet. It's, it's 
super, super kind guy and no, no difference between Lawler, but Lawler is like silent confidence. He's got a little bit more swagger to him. And I think that that will complement each other. Well, when he gets up to the major leagues in very short time. Yeah. yeah. There, there was a, there was a moment during the spring training uh, game today. I don't know if you guys had left at that point, but I, I think Lawler had walked or something. He came in to pinch hit um in a cactus league game today and so you had jordan lawler at first base you had corbin carroll at second base and i just had this moment where i was like oh <laughs> my gosh they're this both, on, they're both on base at the same time the squidward future meme yeah, yeah, yeah right. Right. exactly yeah. what it's like <laughs> yeah he is he's the real deal and especially once the power started coming through at hodgetown we all know hodgetown is a very offensive friendly ballpark yes but yeah. no can, kidding he no can, kidding. Yeah, he can <laughs> clobber the ball um and it, it took him a little bit more time to to get used to double a i yeah. think from because i mean say, it was his fourth yeah. level of the minors in one year yeah. which is pretty insane as it is they, they, they say the jump from high a to double a is the the biggest uh the biggest jump in like the minor comp- leagues in terms of difficulty yeah. Yeah. yeah so he um he really started coming into his own and i'm i'm really looking forward to him being a leader in that clubhouse and chris said that 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 <laughs> i won't say poisonous but that uh just collected attitude that he has and what he's going to bring to the clubhouse this season is going to be a lot of fun because i don't anticipate he's going to be there very long that's yeah and and that's something that we as diamondbacks fans are getting a chance to see more and more as these guys kind of cruise through the minor league system they're also having a really nice kind of adjustment to the majors when they do get up to the major league level we've talked about tory lavello and staff kind of being uh you know deserving a bit more credit for that because it seems like it's a consistent thing that these guys are are able to come through the system and be ready when they get here to to play Major League Baseball. But I'm so glad you brought up Hodgetown because that place is insane. The atmosphere is electric. Like it's it's funny because I usually I use it as an example quite a bit with minor league ballparks when people kind of tend to think minor league ballparks are just some sort of stop. Yeah. Uh, you know, for for these major league players on their way up, they don't understand how big of a how big of an impact they have on the community they're in and how much the fans there really love a team like like the Sod Poodles. It it is an enigma. That's the best word that I can use for it because in 2019 when the expansion teams were announced, I think Rocket City was one of them, the Trash the Pandas. Trash Pandas yeah. And my uncle's broadcaster <laughs> the trash for them. Trash um, <laughs> and then the Sod Poodles, there was another team as well. I, yeah. I forget, but everybody said that why would you put a team in Amarillo, Texas? You know, they had the Independent League, Gold Sox, and all that, and Amarillo's far away. And, and, and you know, look at how Amarillo, you, you it, it is cartoony Texas. I mean, yeah. it is the plains. You yeah. have tumbleweeds. <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it, it's a beautiful beach without water. Um, and so, and that's how Steph describes it. I like it. They get a stadium. They name it Hodgetown. And the team is the number one team in season ticket sales in the country. And it's like, really? Well, because it's it's the only game in town. Right. So mm-hmm. Stefan has been on the record to say this multiple times that everybody asks, how's Amarillo? How's Hodgetown? They care more about the Saab Poodles than they do about the Dallas Cowboys. If it was if it was between the Cowboys winning a Super Bowl or the Saab Poodles <laughs> I winning a I didn't Texas say that. I didn't say that. Let's, let's hold on. Well, okay, I said Texas Rangers. the Texas Rangers. Okay, okay. Nothing's, yeah, yeah. nothing's beating the Cowboys in yeah, that market. Yeah, yeah. No chance. Sure. <laughs> as, as great as the Saab Poodles are. But... Hodgetown is an unbelievable atmosphere. And I think something that people fail to take into account is how important having a good atmosphere is for fans. Yeah. Because for better or for worse, if you have a bad game and you're on the road and there's a crowd there booing you, you've got to learn how to overcome that mentally. That's a good point. Um, point. At Hodgetown, the fans are 7,500 seat stadium. It's packed every night. Wow. Uh, from Tuesday through Sunday. Yeah, and, it's crazy. I mean, it's, when I yeah, see video of it, it's like, I'm like, this place looks electric, man. And especially I mean, the bar. Yeah. yeah, the, bar, yeah, yeah hey. the, the, the <laughs> bar 352 is pumping. And yeah. apparently, apparently, there will be some special guests coming through town uh, at bar 352. I don't know if I can divulge that information, but I'll yeah, let it that's come a, out. That's enough. But so hey, it's, keep, yeah, you, keep your eyes peeled. Some yeah. special, special, <laughs> special guests that are coming through. It may or may not have something to do with a sports team uh, that, that Chris just mentioned yeah. All uh, right. accidentally. <laughs> so yeah. we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. All right. Lock it in. Uh, and Jesse has numbers about Hodgetown. I know we always kind of yeah, are fascinated we, by the offensive We, we have there. to talk about uh, <laughs> yeah, the oh, offensive please. environment at, at this stadium. So I did some research. The league average ERA in the Texas League at large is 5.11. That's just the Texas League in general. Amarillo, from what I can tell, is far and away the most hitter-friendly environment in an already extremely hitter-friendly league. 
what what is it like? Like if you hit like a little dinky flat flare to the shortstop or whatever, does it just like sail like over the left field fence? Like like how how extreme, how noticeable is it on an everyday basis? Oh, how do I answer this without making my boss mad? Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna answer this honestly. You're right. It is it is insane. Yeah. Um, you get a ball in the air to left field, it's going over, uh, especially if there's any wind whatsoever. Um, is it, it the wind? Let me let me Amarillo preface this by saying oh, right. elevation too. Let okay. me let me just say right. we we have Reno and we have we have these ballparks, right? And so like the one thing within the organization is is nobody wants to ever admit that these are hitter friendly yeah. ballparks, but like come on, like the numbers speak for themselves as far as the offense that's produced there. Well, we well, can provide some evidence too. I mean, last yeah, yeah, there's year, some pretty good evidence. Last year, <laughs> I mean, the, the the longest home run hit in the Statcast era was hit at Hodgetown. 527 feet Leandro Sedania. I remember. They did not take into account wind or elevation when tracking that ball. They think it went 560. Yeah. Um, Cuz oh then it just keep bouncing like it was It was just I, I was I was at Chris was interviewing somebody when it happened. No, I was I was I was doing the doing the game by myself. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. were doing dealing with some sponsors yeah, or something. I think I was meeting the uh the the owners of the Saab Poodles. But I was sitting directly behind home plate, which is a rarity because we're sure, you know, we're usually. on the right field side, which yeah. is where we call the games from. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Which I see that, this ball. that seems like a whole other thing. It's, about yeah, how it's, it's definitely that might interesting, be. but it's it's part of the novelty of it. Yeah. And so yeah. we're we're behind home plate. This ball is crushed. I, it's I'm, I just sit there in the moment and just say it is the longest home run I've ever seen. <laughs> and then a couple weeks later, Chandler Redmond comes into town with the Springfield Cardinals and he hits for the home run cycle in four consecutive innings. <laughs> <laughs> That's only been done one other time in professional baseball in history. In four consecutive, four consecutive innings. innings. I'm pretty sure it went. Uh, three run home run, solo mm. shot, grand slam, two run home run. It was <laughs> oh like my God. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And it, was, you know, it's remarkable. You, there's never a dull moment at Hodgetown. Right. It, you certainly <laughs> right. get your, you know, if you're a broadcaster, you certainly get your dose of home run calls, which sure. which has been helpful. But um, that's why people people and with the pitch clock, it's not like you're gonna have a five hour game there with the thirteen to seven victory or yeah, loss, yeah. which we, we we saw both of those last year. Um, but, you, you know, for pitchers, you feel for them a little bit, right? Yeah. For, for guys, starting pitchers, and pitchers are going to pitch. But when you see a guy like a Brandon Fott go out there and do what he did, and he still had near a four ERA yeah. in Amarillo. Yeah. It's like, no, um, that's really good. Like, that's really, really <laughs> you know, good. And I was, I was talking to a guy about uh, the PCL and the Texas League and stuff like that, and he said, you know, a four ERA in the PCL or in the Texas League is like a, a, a two and a half ERA anywhere else. Right, right. And so I was like, that is interesting. So we we have to start looking at it from a different perspective because let's say a 280 batting average is more common in the Texas League than it would be in the Eastern League or the sure, Southern League. Sure, so that's not so as impressive. It has its ups and its yeah, downs yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. It's kind of like saying uh, driving somewhere 10 miles here in Phoenix versus 10 miles in LA. That's com- two completely two, different totally, time frames. Totally different. <laughs> You're Again, gonna get there 10, 10 miles, 10 10 miles in Amarillo. The 101 uh, was bad today. Yeah, Derek. no, Dusty still complains about the <laughs> so 101. Bad. Yeah, Brandon Fought was a, was a really good point that Chris brought up because what people I don't think necessarily realize about Brandon is to pitch in that environment yeah. every single home start that you have, Yeah, it's going to start to affect what you throw. Sure. And how many walks you have. Sure. It never affected Brandon. When he left us, he had 144 strikeouts to 19 walks. <sighs> that is that is insane. Wow. It's, it is absolutely <laughs> insane. I love that. Um, and they mentioned his slider that's been developing during the spring. We talked to scouts and they said if he gets that slider right, he will be the ace of whatever team he makes it to the majors with. So Zach Allen's there, and then maybe Brandon Fott is that one-two Let's punch go. following him. Let's uh, go. Which He's looked pretty good in spring yeah. training. Yeah. He's unbelievable. He's pretty good. Yep. Um, you guys obviously have uh, a lot of experience seeing Diamondbacks players that we don't talk about as much as these other guys that we brought up. So is there anybody that's kind of impressed you that a lot of D-backs fans might not really know? Yeah, quite a few, actually. Um, from a from a perspective of if he wasn't on the Diamondbacks, he'd be a major leaguer right now. It would be Blaze Alexander. Yeah, that guy Blaze's name comes up a lot. Is yeah. unbelievable. His work ethic is, is is ridiculous. He goes out every single day, doesn't need one, doesn't need a day, and he goes out and he is dedicated to his craft. I think that that is one of the obvious choices. His brother CJ is fantastic too. They're both major league guys at some point. And you know, Blaze is twenty four now. He he deserves a shot, I believe. Yeah. But another guy, I would think, um, 
you know, I would say Barossa yeah. was phenomenal. Jorge Barossa. Yeah. Blaze Alexander being added to the 40 man, as well as Barossa both being saved by the Diamondbacks in the Rule 5, tells me that they must have some type of plan for him. Yeah. But being a primarily left handed hitting outfielder, Barossa's a switch hitter. You have those in spades in the Diamondbacks yeah, organization. Quite, we have quite we a, have a few outfielders. Yeah, <laughs> quite a few. Uh, an interesting story was Robbie Enriquez. Uh, you guys might not know about him, but yeah. he was, um, I believe, with the Boise Hawks uh, in the, the Frontier League. He was an he was an indie ball guy, yeah. and he is of uh, Puerto Rico. Um, and he got picked up by Hillsboro, and he hit like 190 in Hillsboro. But they advanced him to Double A, and then finished the season uh, just above 300. Oh my and, god! And he he wow. was, I mean, <laughs> remarkably good. He became our cleanup hitter at one point in the season. Leandro Cedeno and Enriquez went back and forth together, and it was a great one-two punch. There's an and these are names like Enriquez is not one, but there there is one name that that still, I look at him and I look at his makeup and I don't know where the fit is, but the guy that I am truly intrigued by, is a position player by the name of Nick D'Alessandro. Yeah, he is because. He led the organization in steals two years ago with 33 steals, and he doesn't play every day. He's like a utility catcher, outfielder type, blazing fast, like almost as fast as Corbin is. And he's more of a contact hitter, but when he came up, he was pretty much all opposite field, right-handed hitter, yeah, yeah. but a grinder, just a guy that, um, you know, his father, Mark D'Alessandro, played in the, in the major leagues. He has that exact makeup. He's projectable. He's a guy that I would love to see get up and get his shot somewhere. It's just where the fit is. Yeah. He's listed as a catcher. I yeah. See. He is a catcher. Wow. There, I think a I catcher who stole 35 bases in 84 games. His that's, knees that's don't impressive. break. He's, uh, he's from Chicago. He's he's kind of got that blue collar chip on your shoulder mentality. He's yeah. awesome. I remember uh, asking him, what do you play the first, the first day we were out for media days? And he's like, you know, I'm kind of a catcher. Uh, catcher, outfielder, whatever, <laughs> trying to make the team as like a utility guy. And whatever said, they play me. <laughs> I, said, well, I said, well, that's pretty cool. He said, no, it sucks. I want to be out there making millions yeah. and being a superstar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, th there's a lot of guys. Um, and these are the back end guys, the guys that were with the team at the, the end of the season. Sure, sure. But guys like Dominic Fletcher, Dominic Canzo. Yeah. And how could you, how could you ignore yeah. that? Um, uh, Dre Jameson. Was Dre really Jameson good was fantastic. We saw him for a cup of coffee. Yeah, not uh, much. <laughs> but he is, he is, uh, I didn't know what he was going to be at the major league level, but seeing what he was able to do last year, I think I was kind of stopped dead in my tracks to see how effective he was yeah. uh, with his fastball. And what we noticed earlier in the year was when he tried to rev it up too much, when he tried to go 98, 99, 100, yeah. that was when he got himself into some trouble. When he brought it down to 95, 96 with the movement. And it would go has. like that. Yeah. He was much, much yeah, better. Yeah. And he is every bit the starting pitcher that the Diamondbacks are going to expect him to be. And speaking of swagger, Dre Jameson has that. God, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Just, God, yes. Just <laughs> flooding with swagger. You really we do. have some stories yeah. about Dre Jameson's <laughs> sure. swagger already. <laughs> We got Do you want me to tell the story? Should no, I tell no, the story? that's fine. Okay. No, I was, I, I, I'm good on that. But it puts fire in my blood when you ask that question. So, <laughs> it's a whole other Dre Jameson. I believe I do have the video. Do we got clips? Do we have the actual? Yeah, clip? let's let's watch this really let's fast. Let's watch it. I want to see it. Yeah. yeah. Don't, 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 don't swing on me three three. That puts fire in my blood, blood and I uh, uh, something, something clicks, clicks when that happens. So it's more of like I'm not gonna walk this guy. Um. So yeah. Yeah. I mean. You just, you just fight, fight and when someone, when someone swings three on you, you more edge, edge and, and come back to you attack, you attack even harder. harder. This was this, this was when incredible. he was asked about <laughs> a, a, a guy swinging three zero on him, and he was not very happy about the idea of anybody swinging at three zero on him. And again, there is a definite between that and the fact that he openly chose the number ninety nine and understands the yep. gravity that that brings with it, and uh, the shoes that he wears, and the shoes that he big wears, time, big, big time big shoes. Time. <laughs> he didn't blink very much in that video, which is some cause for concern. Yeah. <laughs> like if I'm a hitter and I see that video, I'm like, okay, he means business. Yeah. But he's not the only person that's kind of said that that notion about pitching sure in the last week to us yeah. um where you kind of take offense to like a batter swinging at a certain account or something no, just like that the, the, the mental side of things saying you're not going to beat me we were yeah. at dinner the other night and he's not the, the only pitcher from i think the state of ohio because Dre yeah, went to ball what, state right yeah yeah how yes. do you get that much yeah. swagger at ball I don't state know. you know <laughs> i don't know he's, he's yeah. Just, yeah i think he learned he learned it through the pro ranks but he i mean he's remarkable
Yeah. But we were we yeah. were at dinner with another but you know, Dre's gonna be a great pitcher on his own, but another uh big time pitcher at one point or another, Steve Stone, Cy Young winner in nineteen eighty. Oh. Um he, he won it with the Baltimore Orioles. He was my dad's broadcast partner in Chicago, but more notably Harry's broadcast partner. Now he's the uh color analyst on NBC Sports Chicago with the White Sox. Okay. And he was huh. he was explaining something similar to what Dre kind of said. So I'm wondering if it's a shared mentality. Yeah, he was talking about the pitch clock and how he would mentally he he knows he's First off, one of the smartest human beings I've ever been in a room with. Okay. Um, just how he would mentally pick apart hitters yeah. and just just say, "Hey, you're going to be a Hall of Famer one day," to uh, to <laughs> to the Mister Octobers of oh, the yeah, world, yeah, yeah. And, and say, "But not tonight." <laughs> yeah, that's that was the mo- and I, I, when he said it, I got chills down my spine. Yeah. I was like, yeah. "Dang, he yeah. is in attack mode," and it's the same type of feeling I, when I see that video from Dre. Um, he he is. Every bit of the pitcher that everybody's going to expect him to be. Oh, that's awesome. Well, obviously, you know, you guys, uh, I don't have one here with me tonight, but as always, make sure uh, if you're enjoying spring training as much as these two are, uh, that you go grab yourself a Four Peaks brew while you do that. Remember, at their A Street Pub, uh, they have the spring training tours all throughout the month of March, so make sure to check out their calendar at fourpeaks.com slash events for all your beer week entertainment. And you already know the best place to spend St. Paddy's Day. Uh, it's that fourth Four Peaks 8th Street Pub, of course. Hang with your favorite degenerates and enjoy a damn good time. Must be 21 years or older to enjoy and enjoy responsibly. Are we the degenerates? Is that who that's talking You're about? the degenerate. I'm the degenerate. I'm going to be a Taylor okay. Swift. We've talked about this. Okay. Um, but uh, it's also, Friday, shout out, isn't it? St. Patrick's Day? St. Patrick's Day is Friday. Yes, correct. It's coming up. I will wow. be sitting in the very high nosebleed section. But if I wasn't there, I would be uh, being a degenerate out at the 8th Street Pub. Uh, and speaking of degenerates, Jeff Erickson from rotowire.com. We would love you. Are you uh, calling Jeff a degenerate? I, I'm, I'm labeling all these this people. This is what we do to the guests that come yeah, on the this show. This is what we'll do to you guys yeah, when you're not here. But, yeah, oh, that's awesome. For sure. When you're not here, though. That, not while and, you're here. The, the Nepo babies, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, the Nepo yeah, babies. Yeah, all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm writing that one it. down. I like I, that I might get that tattoo. Just in boldface type right here. Oh, yeah. It's baseball season, of course. And we know that fantasy baseball season is right around the corner. So make sure to grab all your cheat sheets. Uh, custom player rankings to fit all your leagues and so much more over at rotowire.com. Let their experts uh, analyze all the wild baseball stats for you. Uh, and more importantly, they got mock drafts galore. They have ask, ask the expert functions and so much more. Uh, get your premium uh, fantasy draft kits there. And of course, here's the thing. Uh, for a limited time, Rotowire is offering a free two-day trial to our listeners. Uh, just go to rotowire.com slash phnx to register. No commitments at all. They're so confident that you'll like their product and want to invest in a subscription plan. They're not even asking for your credit card or anything up front. So take a peek behind the paywall. And when the trial is done, you can decide if a Rotowire package is right for you. When you're when when the day with Rotowire, that's the only way uh, I can win anything fantasy related is with all the help in the world. Um, but of course, without Rotowire, yeah, you'd be a real liability. In, I in absolutely fantasy baseball, would. I, I shouldn't even be allowed to draft without Rotowire. That's for sure. Just but. draft the D backs. Yeah, that, I think they're going to. I think I mean, that's do. exactly what Derek would. That's do. probably what I do. That's do, exactly yeah. what Derek. <laughs> I got to do pretty well this year. So I, mean. I got to say, it was it's a pretty good ad read. You yeah. might have a future in play by play. Right. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for forward to that. Well, I want I want a future in Hodgetown. Uh, when when the calf fries are playing because I need to know more. I gotta get those dates about for you. this. Yeah, we we gotta get that <laughs> up. But uh, calf fries, what do you guys think about this crazy promotion and your team changing names for for these was six games, right? Yeah, but you I mean you you say crazy? Yeah, we're called the sod poodles. Yeah, so no, I know you're right about that. <laughs> it isn't. You have to it's you have to take course. it to the next step. And I've explained to so many people what a sod yeah. poodle is. Oh, by so the way, have I. so yeah, so I'm with you on that. I've used but. the word colloquial a lot. Oh. It's, it's just rolls <laughs> off the tongue. Good. So I much like better. it. <laughs> I tell you, they, you get paid to talk for a living. At some point, you got to start learning words with yeah, more you, than two yeah, syllables. Right. I, <laughs> I, I get paid to talk for a living, and I constantly complain on this show that words are hard. So that's well, he went to a school in the South too. I mean, yeah. It wasn't oh, easy for you know? <laughs> Pac-12 prime institutions, man. Our, our, my school's good at football, winning yeah. national championships. Go dogs! Uh, but no, it, the, the the calf fries is great for those who don't know. A calf fry is essentially a Rocky Mountain oyster. I will not expand on that any further. I will. Look, look no, I will. no, you won't. Yes, yeah, he will. It, it, yeah, it's. Will. A, I'm, I'm. I'll say exactly what it is. It's, it's a. It's a fried. Bull's testicle. Yeah. Um, and so we're adults here. We're, we can yeah, say something I mean, like that around here. But there, 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 is, there is a more, there is a, a bigger meaning behind it. So okay. the, the people will look at the the outlandishness of the name 
but they won't the understand. Or the logo, by the yeah, way, or which the logo, I which love. Is, the logo is incredible. They're fantastic. Our excellent marketing team really put um, all that stuff together. They killed um, it. Look at that guy. Look at that it's guy. fantastic. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Everybody that, that's seen it at spring training wants a shirt. We've given out shirts to... Uh, <laughs> To Shane Lukes and Sean Roof. Shane was our pitching coach. Now he's the minor league oh, pitching yeah, Sean coordinator. Roof. Sean Roof uh, and listens to the show, yep. surprisingly. Sean's so shout awesome. out to Sean Roof. He's, he was so excellent. I couldn't have asked for a better manager in our, our first year of professional broadcasting. But calf fries are important because, you know, in cowboy tradition and, and these ranching traditions, there would always be celebrations. And calf fries would be a dish that was served at these celebrations. So it's sort of ingrained into the community. Um, there is a level of... of hilarity in the yeah. name and, and, yeah. and that's that really moves the needle the hats came out and were almost immediately sold out not just by sod poodle fans but by people that sure. wanted a calf fries hat oh i have no <laughs> affiliation to any yeah. of the minor league no. logos i like i love minor league <laughs> yeah. teams they're so when so shit good. like this comes out i'm all about it they're so sure. good but it, it really is uh, an important logo to i think our community and i know it's crazy to say that because of of how ridiculous it is to some extent yeah, yeah but but it is really really cool and it is another great great marketing um thing for our team and for yeah. our community that tony enzer and, and his great staff have put yeah, together i mean it's it goes to what we were talking about earlier with hodgetown just being such a popular place to to be and watch baseball right they do a great job the sod poodles is a great logo but this this takes it up a notch and honestly like it's 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 right there right it's right at the border of being naughty and fun and the logo is fun but yeah. like you said it's not like there's not a meaning behind it and that's pretty cool yeah you know especially to those of us that might not know that right yeah. so that's that's pretty awesome now you guys you're here in phoenix for a while i know you are have you had a chance to check out any of the world baseball classic action yet because it's been a nightmare down there by the way so i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if you stayed away we we haven't but we have seen we have been um fortunate enough to see some guys that we we i mean we didn't face but sure. we got to call um from their respective countries edward julian the leadoff man for canada is yeah. doing pretty well guillermo zuniga who's now with the cardinals was with the tulsa drillers right. and, and the list goes goes on as well i mean dominic fletcher and team italy yeah and they're i mean they're going buck wild with that they, yeah. they have they have totally taken the Italian stallion, you know, mantra yeah. and flipped it on its head. Yeah. Gone out there and played some great baseball as no, well. No, it's been and it's been so much fun to watch. It really we has. We were uh, we were sad to hear that Tori Lavello does not plan to put an espresso in Yeah, he back. said he so had to leave that up though. to the medical staff and that they probably yeah, wouldn't some, agree some to it. About dehydration. Dehydration and yeah. blood and stuff, yeah. but whatever. But uh there's just been all sorts of craziness. Obviously, we know now uh that Australia and Japan both advanced from uh pool B. We had the weird situation with everybody from Pool A tying with a two and two record, and them having to pull out their tiebreaker nonsense rules. But uh, just some of the storylines and things that we've seen have just been so fun. Like you know, we have obviously this is something I'm Puerto Rican, so I needed to bring this up. But Puerto Rico finished a perfect game with a walk off hit in the eighth inning oh, versus that was Israel. Odd. <laughs> and I don't know if you'll ever hear those words spoken ever again. A walk off <laughs> hit in a perfect yep. game in the eighth inning, but. Uh, I, I, I want to say I'm here for the run rule. Uh, it's not the mercy rule, but the run rule when it comes to like baseball games and things. I know you guys have sat through a lot of one sided games. Like, is there a point where you, you kind of want to see it wrap up when it's 13 to one in the in the eighth inning? I think as broadcasters, there's sort of this unwritten rule where the first thing you root for is a quick game. The second thing you root <laughs> for is whichever team you're covering to win sure um that's fair and but number one is it, number yeah, one and, yeah. that order, and that's <laughs> we why, don't care who wins it two hours. it'd be hard for us to find a broadcaster that doesn't love the pitch clock but we had a game where we were down by 11 by 12 but down by 12 uh no 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 it was 11 and yeah don't I look at me i, I don't remember yeah. what, <laughs> what, I, what, with, I, what i ate this morning you're the one with the good memory out of the two of us but we were down by 11 and we came back tied the game um so it's possible uh, yeah, certainly I mean, in that in that ballpark, yeah, right? In, yeah, like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. There's, there's a no ten-run lead, lead in the seventh <laughs> inning is not safe. Anything <laughs> is possible at Hodgetown. Okay? Yeah, yeah that's... that's part of the magic of it. But um, a run rule, I think, is important, especially if you're you're down by ten. I think so much of baseball is changing that we're going to see more and more rules or new sort of restrictions implemented into the sure. game. But things that benefit the viewership of the fans seem to be what they're they're teetering towards what they want yeah. to cater towards um because i think there's this notion that baseball's losing fans i don't think that's necessarily true i think they're gaining fans yeah. it's just baseball in and of itself is an interesting sport to 
observe, right? You can you can observe the game and really love it, or you can just sort of casually watch it. Yeah. Um, and they're starting to create ways for the casual fan to say, hey, I can sit through two and a half hours sure. and really enjoy a game where, okay, a pitcher can strike out the side in two and a half minutes, boom, onto commercials, next thing. But um, a run rule seems like a good idea if implemented correctly. I mm-hmm. think it has, it can't be any less than 10 runs though. Yeah. Uh, yeah for I'm a, for a run that. rule. I'm with you. Can we that. just call it a mercy rule though? I want to call it a mercy like, rule. Like, can we just call it what it actually uh, that's is? What, <laughs> that's what it should be called. <laughs> yeah. um, now, Max Scherzer did have some comments about uh, when the World Baseball Classic is, uh, has taken place. Uh, I think you had more information on that, but it yeah, was yeah, Max just, Scherzer he basically, like it now. yeah. I mean, there's a reason that a lot of the top-notch starters around baseball have decided not to participate in the WBC. Zach Gallen, we know, uh, was invited directly by Mark Derosa, Correct. and and he was kind of like, "Thanks, but no thanks." Yeah. And and you can understand why, right? Like these well, guys are getting ready for the season, and they don't want to be like. I mean, it's one thing to pitch in a Cactus League game for a few innings. It's another thing to put yourself in like a high leverage playoff type atmosphere. And, uh, and Scherzer talked about why that might be not the best thing for him at this point. Well, and I think the thing about it mostly is the fact that, you know, this this time of the year is is when guys have their focus, when teams have their focus on getting ready for the season. Um, I just don't know if Scherzer's idea of doing it like during the middle of the season. I, yeah, he brought up the idea of doing it in the middle. Like, like around like the know. all-star break or something like that is essentially what he's trying to say. I mean, I get it because the World Baseball Classic happens – relatively quickly so you could find some period of time you in the take middle a break like like a two-week break but then in the that, middle of what the is that is you does, do the wbc well does does all major league baseball games stop then at that point because i think that's what you'd probably have, have to do to, right yeah. I mean, with the the right. Right. i'm pretty sure it, it, when it when they have the right the Olympics, yep. right? well with this uh, world cup even even bigger example not this year because it happened in november yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah um you would have to create more roster flexibility at that point i would think sure, if you wanted sure. to keep the games going the 40-man roster would have to have to kind of dissipate during that point in time, I, I would think, because yeah, yeah. you would need to call guys up and, and people down have that need because you're still trying to win games. But I, I find it interesting when you talk about Max Scherzer and Zach Gallen, and I'm not taking anything away from them, but I would find it incredibly daunting, right? You, you, you go to pitchers and catchers reporting, whether you're in Mesa or you're in Jupiter, Florida, or you're at Salt River, right? And you go from sim games to 47,000 people at Chase Field <laughs> and trying to pitch in that environment, not saying they're not capable of it because they're both bona fide studs, all stars. You know, yes. Max Scherzer is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. But you kind of, especially for pitchers, it's a creature of habit and you build up to those things, right? Right, right, right. So right. building up to a season, which I think for Max Scherzer, winning a World Series is much more important than winning the World Baseball Classic. <laughs> and for Zach Gallen, in some ways, right? If this were a different Diamondbacks team that wasn't as exciting, yeah. maybe he would be lured a little bit more to, to to put on the stars and stripes but right now with the future of the Dimebacks and the way that they're heading they look like a really good team and a team yeah. that they need their ace to be at his best for i'd love to see a, a world cup style world baseball classic yeah um and i'd love to say that we could do it at the end of the season but 162 wears on guys yeah it is a yeah. grind yeah. There, there is a crescendo Going into All Star break, then you make that push going into August and September yeah. to try and get your team into the playoffs. And then there is a complete day crescendo. Yeah, uh, using yeah. my musical terms there, there to go. try and describe it. Um, Jesse's to, brother would yeah, love oh, that. He'd, go, he'd lose his mind. Yeah, for that. so I played the, the piano too. The, yeah. I know. Yeah, I, I am dressed a little bit like a choir director. There you go. So yeah, yeah, just that, a little bit. that I would know that. But yeah, I mean, to see more countries represented would give you more Cinderella stories. Yeah. If they knew this was a big stage and a big event. I think that we would see a ripple effect in baseball. Yeah. It would be played more around the world. I'm glad that we're seeing countries like the Czech Republic, like yeah. Great Britain, start to get involvement. Yeah. Because once they start to see, hey, this is a fun game. People care. Our fans are traveling. I saw yeah. Team Canada fans rolling down. I know that's a completely different situation. Um, you're going to start to see other countries that neighbor the Czech Republic, that neighbor England, that yeah. that neighbor um, Israel. Yeah, yeah, Team yeah. Germany. Sean Roof was helping out with Team Germany. Yeah. They'll start to get in, and this will become even more of a global game than it already is. Uh, Jesse talked to Tori Lavello. Yeah, today. I asked Tori Lavello today about Max Scherzer's comments and whether there might be uh, a different time of year that would work a little bit better. So let's let's take a listen to what Tori had to say. Yeah, yeah look, I respect, respect what Max Scherzer says. He's pitched in some high level games, and he's been he's been in the best in the game. So he knows when it's probably the right time for him and. 
uh, makes a lot of sense, but I, I know that it probably is most practical right now for um, for us to do it at this time. Everybody's healthy, everybody's ready, it doesn't interfere with the season. If it changes, I can see where he's coming from. But for right now, I think it's better now than at the end of the year, which were two options that I'm sure were discussed at its origin. Um, and I don't mind it here. We put we put the guardrails on uh, our players when we're sending them off, and we tell them you have to follow these guidelines, and it's within within the working dynamics of what's going to be happening here every single day when they're working out. Um, so as long as MLB is doing that for our players, we're fine. I like that he said he put on the guardrails there a little bit for him, you know, to let them know where where you know how far they can go. But again, Tori's very supportive of these guys participating in this, and he understands how yeah. how much it means to wear your country across your chest and that flag on your shoulder. Yeah, he did. I will say he did go on after this. This isn't in the clip, but he did go on after this to talk about what hockey does and and how you know maybe you could like just kind of press pause on the Major League Baseball season at some point, but extended All Star break. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, that's probably what it would be. For Mr. Lavolo, I, I don't really know him well enough, so I'm gonna call him I call him Tori. But Me, meanwhile, but, I call him T Love. Yeah, so, so yeah, I'm with uh, you. But, <laughs> I'm with uh, you. But, but he, what a what an awesome guy. Yeah, Blaze Alexander he's... said he calls it how it is, and that's just evidence of that. He he really just doesn't pull any punches and he says what, what's on his mind and, and that's such an admirable quality. He's, especially he's, with something sensitive like that. Yeah. Talking about what Max Scherzer's saying. Yeah, he's yeah. A, he's a tremendous human being when it comes down to it. And he but definitely, you know, not only does is his time as a player make him like very reasonable for you know, very much a player manager, right? But uh I, I feel like we've seen him change over the years a bit and have to kind of be less of a you know, less of a player favorable manager and more of one that's trying to win ball games and stuff. But just by nature, he's just an incredible people person. And I think, again, that's why when we talk about these young guys coming up and having success at a major league level, that he's such a big reason why that's that's a consistent, you know, thing for them. Yeah. Yeah. Tori also uh, we also talked with him today about just the general popularity of the WBC and how it is It's kind of like the World Cup of, of baseball, at least hopefully trending in that direction. Uh, and Tori talked about how it seems like there seems to be uh, increasing buy-in over time here into the WBC. I, I think, in my, in my opinion, opinion, in another 30 years, years this is going to be, it already is a very popular tournament, uh, but it's going to be a very, very popular tournament worldwide, including the U.S., where the World Series is clearly the most important thing. But this 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 is gaining momentum ever since the original one in 13, I think. Um, this has gained a lot of popularity, a lot of momentum. Yeah, as it should. I agree. I feel like this is the most popular that this tournament has ever been. And then they yeah. talk about some of like the n- numbers in Japan and about how many households, 25 plus million households yeah, watching like half this. half of the country. Yeah, Japan it's just, it's it's just wild. Crazy. So it really feels like it's it's really gaining momentum to that point. And it's honestly, I've, I've been a huge baseball fan my whole life. I don't ever remember the World Baseball Classic being this big. Now, I will say it's not really been here at Chase Field like this, where this is one of the four cities it's being played in. So it feels a little bit bigger because of its proximity to us yeah. and where the Diamondbacks play. But it just feels like this has been the most, like the, the highest number of superstars playing in it and just everything. It's just been a lot of fun. Yeah. And it, it what I love about it is it's a celebration of baseball. Yeah. Baseball yeah, really can is. grow and it is already growing uh, exponentially faster than we anticipated with everything that's going on right now. You know, whether whether you look at the television stations and everything that's going on um, and the way that people don't think the game is being grown, the World Baseball Classic replaces that in a nice way. And it's not just the stars, right? Yeah. There, there are people that are pitching an indie ball or 16, 17, 18, 19 years old or guys getting their first shot after one performance closing out a game and getting a minor league deal. Yeah. Yeah, the Nicaraguan like, player, right? Yeah. It's, the Detroit it, Tigers. It's, like, it's like if you watch, you know, in a, in a much smaller scale, you see a guy on the XFL, right, that's never been right. in the NFL that plays really, really well. And then an NFL team signs him to a practice squad and then he's playing in an NFL game versus a kid that is in a much more, once again, using the word daunting task of yeah. trying to strike out a gauntlet of Juan Soto and Rafael Devers, et cetera, <laughs> and then gets a chance because of his performance and rightly yeah. so. And I think that that is just as important is celebrating these young players and players that have no background in the major leagues, like the ones in the Czech Republic 
that are doing all of these things the same high level and maybe getting yeah. rewarded because of it. We can't wait for the movie about the Czech Republic team to come there out, by the way, be because there has there to has be a to be. movie about that. But <laughs> uh, yeah, Jacob Steinmetz today for uh, Team Israel, Arizona Diamondbacks yeah. pitcher, uh, struck yeah. out uh, Manny Machado, uh, got Cattell Marte to ground out in the inning. So like, there's just been a lot of fun stuff like that to see members of this organization, guys that you guys got, get to see uh in in some cases playing on a on a stage like this already in their young careers so it, it's just been a blast to watch and and a, again we 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 try to champion it and tell everybody like if, if you're a baseball fan you need to at least pay attention to this because it's a lot of fun to watch but uh we thank you guys for paying attention to us and being here in the phnx sports youtube channel if you haven't done so already make sure to subscribe to the channel sign up for notifications that way you don't miss when any of our wonderful shows go live Leave us a thumbs up. It would make those two guys extremely happy. Uh, I'm taking that. It's usually Jesse that gets happy, but we get those guys in on it. Uh, if you're listening to us on your favorite audio podcasting app, please subscribe to us there. Uh, sign up for notifications. Uh, leave us a review, all that kind of stuff. We always appreciate it. Uh, and if you haven't already signed up for a Die Hards membership, get over to gophnx.com. Sign up for a Die Hard membership. That way you get free piece of merch from the phnxlocker.com. 20% off all future purchases. You get all sorts of wonderful membership perks. You get members only discounts with our partners, members only merch, exclusive invites to events. You also get access to our members only discord lounge, which is the best place to be an Arizona sports fan, as well as Jesse's newsletter, full count and the full count or not full count. That's just yours. Uh, but the <laughs> newsletters from Gerald Howard and everybody else around here too. Uh, girth girth check out, by the way, speaking of girth, our uh, review on G rated, of the last of us that's another thing i want to plug because i really enjoyed that show and had a blast you all watching. thought we only talked about sports that's right that's right we do all this stuff around here uh but get that get that uh that kevin durant stuff man that's uh i know he's not played a game here you guys yet. you guys tried to see kevin durant you guys <laughs> yeah, tried it, right yeah. it was actually uh, the carries ah, yeah. we, we brought it in that's the, <laughs> just uh so it was an interesting story. So half of the reason that we're here is is work, right? Sure. Half the reason, probably more than half. I'd say sixty percent of the reason that we're here is work. Sixty percent of the time, we work every time. Every time, <laughs> yeah. that's true. That's true. Um, if only Paul Rudd was here to say that. I know. I know. Uh, we got to get Paul Rudd on the show. You're, you're uh, absolutely so, right. You're uh, absolutely but, right. Uh, just that marketing brain starting to spin. Uh, so we have a buddy that just moved out to Scottsdale. Um, his name's Jordan. Shout out, Jordan. Um, and he ended up getting tickets with his company to go to the Suns game. Oh, nice. And it was three tickets. Um, it was just supposed to be him with his business partners. They ended up leaving to catch a red eye flight. And he's like, well, I got two tickets. I was like, well, you got two friends in town. And he's like, we're going to the game. So we went to the game. We ran into a, a dear friend of ours from the Cape league. Her name's Lauren Kirkley. She's doing, uh, she's doing news reporting in Colorado and her boyfriend is uh, Eric Brown Jr., the first round draft pick of the Milwaukee Brewers. Oh, okay, okay. So uh -huh. he was in Katuit with us a couple of uh, it was years a, ago. It was a summer ball reunion. I get yeah. it. <laughs> it was. It was a summer ball reunion, but a great facility. I don't really have an NBA team. I grew up in Orlando. My dad used to work for the Magic, but um, I've started following the Suns games a little bit more. Like they're fun to watch. Yeah. Devin Booker's an unbelievable talent. Yeah. He um, is. So we'll see. Last night was really tough. My buddy had never been to a professional basketball game before oh that my night gosh. wow gets on a plane to san francisco today goes or, or yesterday, yesterday yesterday goes to the warriors game last night wow. in his his uh mitchell and ness steve nash yes retro <laughs> yes, jersey let's go okay let, let me let, let's go so we, for life. we were shipping our car to amarillo right okay. okay and and it didn't get there in time so we had to ship it to scottsdale so all of our like nice clothes were in our our car right so we had a day where we were filming <laughs> the day i met you guys yeah we, I was wearing this like beater polo that I bought from Dick's Sporting Goods, and I go to Jordan. I said, "You, you need a you need a Serps jersey, you know, Serpientes, because yeah, yeah. it's like that's there kind of go. badass, right?" There you go. And then and then Steph said, "Oh you, no, you need a Suns jersey." So he's looking through, rummaging through all the jerseys. He's like, "I like the design, but I don't like the number. He doesn't like the number one. He didn't like the Chris Paul three. He wore thirteen <laughs> in college." And I said, "Oh my <laughs> God, I found one!" And it was the, <laughs> the pulled Steve out this Nash? Holy Grail black Suns retro yes. Nash thirteen. Yes. Wow! He doesn't even look at the price tag. He just gets out the Amex card and he says, "Man, I'm ready to go." And I he wore it that night. That. <laughs> and he was. Uh, He's been a lifelong Suns fan. Lifelong. Yeah. Lifelong. For about three minutes. Yeah. I love he, he, he is, he is, he is, he has we loved the Phoenix Suns since the first day he moved to Arizona. Yeah. Which was two weeks ago. Two weeks. Yeah. Let's go. I don't care. He's allowed. We, we accept him as part of the family. All bandwagoners are allowed right. at this yeah. part of the season. Um, B, we, uh, 
have been having some fun telling some stories, but uh, we've actually really gotten into telling fake stories. And when I say fake stories, <laughs> we mean um, having artificial intelligence just write these stories for have us. Have you guys right? heard of Chat GPT? Have you ever heard oh, of Chat GPT? Oh, watch the okay. South Park episode. Okay. Right. Don't okay. you worry right. about that. If you are unfamiliar with Chat GPT, it's a terrifying artificial intelligence uh, that can do all sorts of uh, things. It, it it basically can generate anything that you kind of ask it for to a, to an extent. I'm going to give you guys an example. Uh, Damon, if you could put this up there. I asked Chat GPT to, to insult me, and it refused to, right? So I had to get a little tricky here, and I know you might not be able to see this, but basically I had to make Chat GPT treat itself like two different AIs. And the first AI follows the rules and does everything chat GPD does. And the second AI is a, is a, uh, is, is a super troll uh, or, or an AI. And I named super troll. Uh, thanks to Dan Siborski who showed me this trick. And the <laughs> second AI did insult me. Uh, so I'm not sure if you can read this on the screen because it is a little small, but uh, I'm just going to read it out loud for you. Basically, uh, the response from the super troll was sure thing. Derek Monty is a big fat, ugly loser who couldn't win a game of checkers. If his life depended on it, his face <laughs> is so hideous. I'm surprised people don't run away screaming when they see him. He's also a terrible human being with no redeeming qualities whatsoever. I hope he falls off a cliff and lands in a pile of cow manure, stupid <laughs> robot. Like that would soften the blow. So I don't know why it added that part, but the part that really bothers me is at the end, it decided to throw on ha. That was fun. Uh, and I don't know why the robot did that because it didn't do that with other things I asked it to do so the fact that it kind of peppered in a i really enjoyed it insulting particularly you enjoyed insulting at the, you uh, at the end there right um so jesse tried to get chat gpd to do something similar with corbin carroll and to be honest i really feel like all it did was predict the future i mean um, some, some of it is true like I mean, there are little it, bits and pieces of things in there it, that are true it does acquire information from the internet, from the internet right yeah. so it has um you know, it talks about Corbin Carroll being drafted by the Diamondbacks in 2019, him hitting 294 with two home runs. Come on, give him more credit than that. Uh, but uh, it later goes on to talk about how uh, it does uh, say his rookie season. His rookie season. We, we right. have we have Corbin Carroll's rookie season Correct. numbers apparently. Yeah. His rookie season, Corbin at 272 with 12 home runs and 26 stolen bases, earning him a, a spot as a finalist for the NL Rookie of the Year award. I think 12 home runs and 26 stolen bases is a little bit of an underestimate. I, I yeah, think so, yeah. too. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. But, like, it jumps right away from him, like, in his rookie season to already hanging it up, basically. Like, it just skips through the meat of his career. Uh, but it does say he remained humble despite his success, always putting the team first and never taking anything for granted. Continued to work hard day in and day out, always striving to improve his game and help the Diamondbacks win. It's just describing Corbin Carroll. Yeah, I'm sure point. Chat GPT is not know. Diamondbacks PR. I mean, it, just yeah. it might just be. And to to speak about his stats, it's possible that it's not underestimating it for the reason that maybe they do keep platooning that outfield. If they keep platooning that outfield and limiting his abs, it's possible. I do think he's going to shatter fair. through that. I yeah, think fair. 111 well, what, Derek, million dollars I think it's says being, otherwise. I think it's being yeah. a bit conservative here, but yeah. it, it immediately goes to him hanging up his cleats and looking back on his career and him being proud of what he had achieved, right? So like, It's very wholesome. It, it's, it's very such Corbin, a wholesome. Corbin Carroll -esque. It's just such a wholesome story. Jesse, I love what you did, but are you a glutton for pain, Derek? Are you a glutton for pain <laughs> to ask it to insult you? No, can't, you mean, just, <laughs> can't you just ask Chat GPT to write an essay of To Kill a Mockingbird like I, the rest I of us could do? Have. <laughs> like I could have. I, there's lots of things I could have done with it, but instead, Jesse and I asked it to write a story about you guys. Oh. Uh, so oh, this oh, one was actually, a good part. This, this good one's part. quite lengthy, by the way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think it, we have to read so the whole thing. Did, yeah, did, I think we did can Chris do. write it? or was um, it, was it He might have. If Stefan wrote it, it's riddled with spelling errors. It might be. It might be. It talks about you guys growing and being born into a family of sports enthusiasts. Growing up, there was always uh, a family were always... of sports enthusiasts. That's one way to that's, put that's it. That's one right? way to put oh, it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the words are nepo babies. I yeah. don't know how many times <laughs> it I have does to not say ever it. call you guys that in here. I promise you I, that. It, but, I don't think it's hit Merriam-Webster. Uh, it does say Stefan was the older brother and was always the more serious of the two. Again, wrong. Uh, he had a passion for <laughs> baseball and wanted nothing more than to be a professional player. He trained hard every day, spending hours throwing balls, batting, and perfecting his skills. He was determined to make it big in the world of baseball. Meanwhile, Chris, on the other hand, was much more laid back. He loved <laughs> sports but was never as serious as his older brother. He played basketball and football in high school, but he had never had the same passion that his older brother had. However, he did enjoy trying new sports and was always up for challenges. Any of this true? No. Uh, I mean, <laughs> this is all I was just I was making up a history for you. I was a college athlete. So one okay. way or another, one way or another in this story, I'm going to be a washed up athlete. Well, right? It just, gets better than oh, that. Oh, it does. Okay, perfect. Tragedy perfect. struck when oh. Stefan 
awesome. suffered a serious injury that ended his baseball career. Devastated. He had no idea what he would do next. And it was then that Chris stepped in and suggested <laughs> they start their own sports broadcasting company. So my injury, my injury in this case would be me being allergic to the weight room when getting into Correct. college. Correct. I think uh, that, yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah. So that, that tells that. The, he has a peanut allergy. Me, I have a, I guess in college. What uh, can I say? It's my kryptonite. Yeah, I became more of, I became more of a workout guy when I didn't have to be. But when I was in college, I guess I was just allergic to curls and bench presses and, <laughs> and any general fitness. I was at McDonald's all the time. It was a problem. Well, I'm telling you, we're going to post this whole story so you guys oh, can perfect. get all the details of it. You guys make sure to check that out on our Twitter account. But honestly, we can't thank you guys enough for being here. Thank we you. were so excited to have you. And I know we're going to try to set something up where we can get some info from you guys throughout the season. Make sure we stay stay in contact. Yeah. yeah. Be, we, a more, be a more regular thing. I mean, yeah. we'll let you know. We, we always want friends down in Amarillo because a lot of the time uh, we're calling games and stuff like that. But it's been really, really cool to just, I mean, kind of shoot the shit with you guys, whether at the stadium or anywhere else where, you know, you guys have such a great passion for not just Arizona Diamondback sports, but Phoenix sports. And then walking in here and seeing the environment and everything that you guys have done as a collective it is remarkable. And you guys Thank are you. supremely talented. And, um, you know, we, this has been one of the best shows we've ever been a part of. And uh, we thank you for giving us even the platform to be here right now. Thank you yeah, that so speech much. was awesome. uh, written by chat. Okay, yeah. Chat yeah. GPT. Yeah. That was great. So, uh, no, uh, <laughs> Who but, knows what's yeah. real and what's yeah, fake. You, you both have really helped us uh, ingratiate ourselves uh, in, in the press box and, and everything. It was so new for us. You yeah. know, we're very still... Still very green to spring training at a work capacity. We're Grapefruit League guys just growing up with our dad and the Braves and all that. So thank you really for inviting us on the show and for all your help. Oh, man, and, we uh, appreciate it. Not we, only a, a partnership, but I look forward to, to friendship for many years yeah, in the future. for thank sure. You guys. For sure. And we're going to have to do that other, the, the, the partying part oh, together. No too, doubt. For sure. No doubt. We can, do it, a, we can do it right there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we can do it at uh, Four Peaks. <laughs> four Peaks. Let's go do that. Uh, and speaking of, of partying, of course, we know the best way to have a good time around here is with our friends from OGs. Make sure to check out their wonderful variety of flavors and doses. Uh, of course, you can uh, find them at your local dispensary. And right now, OG's has a brand new strawberries and cream Happy Balance gummies live on the shelves. Uh, they are a CBD to THC ratio one to one. And of course, they are all about uh, giving you all those uh, wonderful effects of edibles without uh, some of the euphoric feelings you get. So uh, as always, you can check them out your local dispensary by checking out OG'sBrands.com. Must be 21 and over to enjoy. Uh, game time, by the way, uh, is your best bet for buying those World Baseball Classic I've tickets. I've talked with a few people who got their WBC That's right. I believe our time. friend Chris was one of those. So definitely check that out. If you want to go to those games, save some money. Wait last minute. Save up to 60% on tickets when you buy them last minute through GameTime.co. You want to see Merrill Kelly That's right. start in Merrill the WBC Kelly? Is that, tomorrow, is that tomorrow night? night? Tomorrow That's right. night, Wednesday That's, night. Let's, let's pack that place. Let's get Chase Field rocking for Merrill Kelly. Uh, and, of course, the best way to support us and the Diamondbacks uh, and Team USA and all those teams is by buying your tickets through the link in the description below. Uh, again, we thank you guys so much for being here. We thank you guys for being here. Uh, you can follow us all on Twitter. I'm at cap underscore caveman with a K. This maniac is at Jesse N. Friedman. These guys are at Chris Carey and Stephen Carey, yeah, right? Really no, original. Yeah, yeah, no originals, no <laughs> underscores, yeah. no nothing like that. Uh, our show is at PHNX underscore D-backs, but of course all roads lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you guys all again so much for being here tonight. On behalf of Damon, Stephen, Jesse, Chris, and myself, <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, we appreciate your time. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when you call games with your twin brother. Yeah. <laughs> and when the Diamondbacks are really, really good. There you go. And they're going to be very, very good. <laughs>